Good to see you, Good Andre see you, Reed. Good to see you. Thanks you, for having me, too. You bet. Pro Football Hall of Famer Andre Reed is here in studio. Great to see you. You just we just talked about how you have your Hall of Fame ring on. Um, did you recently misplace your jacket, Andre Reed? Is that true? I recently misplaced everything, man. I'm just, I don't know. Some of them days, you know, you just you don't know where you're at. Yeah, I did. I was in uh, Atlanta mm -hmm. actually doing an event there for the Boys and Girls Club, which I'm a part of. Yep. And I was waiting for my brother. Actually, I was in Pennsylvania. Sorry. Okay. I was waiting for my brother yeah. uh, on the curb and had my two bags in my garment garment bag there yeah. and just got in the car and left my garment bag on the sidewalk. Just totally? Just, just totally just blew a fuse. And, and left your it Hall of Fame jacket was inside, zipped into the garment bag? Into the garment bag with a couple other things. And I got home and I was like, I thought I brought three bags. Oh, my. And it just so happened that I had my name... Uh, and my phone number, because I just got the got the coat cleaned. And a cop called me from the airport in Philly. <laughs> he said, hey, I think we have your bag. And I was like, wow. I was like, I got some problems. Man. So if you did not have your your Hall of Fame jacket dry clean, but they still it still says Andre Reed inside, inside the jacket, yeah, right? Yeah, but I had, but still, I don't know if how, they would have looked at it that way. And how to contact you, too. Yeah. So you have it so back. So that was We're a good, good Lord, you know, looking out for me. Amazing. Again. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hold on to that, man. Yes, sir. Yes, um, sir. What yeah. do you think of uh, the record that Brady broke last night? What's more impressive, 500 touchdowns in a career or 71 different receivers catching touchdowns for Tom Brady? Uh, I think 500 touchdowns. I mean, they're both extraordinary feats. I mean, Tom Brady is – Terrific Tom. What else can you say about him? Mm -hmm. Five Super Bowl rings. The guy's breaking records every time he steps on the field. 500 TDs. Who got more? Uh, Peyton Manning and Brett Favre, right? Correct, sir. Maybe Drew Brees someday. Drew Brees is going to break the record He's this week. Probably. four away from four. doing that, but Brady's the only one to have done it with the same team. Yeah, well, then that's even more. So he's been there, what, 17 years, 18 years? In how, New England. How difficult is it for a quarterback to keep throwing touchdowns to so many different receivers over the years, Andre? But it seems like New England just knows how to pick guys up from the grocery store. You know, they they got guys that you, they're not household names, and they don't have the big name like some of the these these uh, teams have today uh, in the league. But they buy into the system. And once you buy into a system, it doesn't matter who's out there. You're, you're, and then you have Tom Brady throwing to you. Uh, then you have Bill Belichick kind of yelling at you too. So, mm -hmm. But you buy into a system, and if you believe in that system, it doesn't matter who's out there. This is what we want you to do. It is where we want you to be. Be on time. All the things that Bill Belichick kind of puts on the, on the table for all these guys, and they go out and play on Sundays. And it's hard to beat them. It's hard to beat that kind of mentality. It's amazing. It yeah. sounds so simple the way you say it. So why does, why don't other people do it? Everybody's been trying to do it for how many years? They've been the class of the AFC for since Brady's been there, along with Pittsburgh and and a couple of these other teams. But you have to beat New England most of the time to get to a well, Super Well, I know. But, at, but by what I mean, uh, Andre Reid here on the Rich Eisen Show, is that every coach has a system, right? Of course, Every yeah. coach has yeah. a a a rule of law that they try to bring to a locker room and get somebody to buy in, right? Marv Levy clearly had that of course, back yeah. in the day. Mm -hmm. How long did it take for you guys to buy into what he was selling? I think, you know, every With coach... The Hall of Fame number 12 as well. At yes, the every, I think every coach has a different philosophy. Again, buying into the system. And then how do you get all those players to be on the same page every single Sunday? That's hard to do in this league now because everybody's individualized. Everybody wants to do dances. I mean, we saw that you, you make a tackle and you want to go all the way to the other end zone and do a dance or whatever you want to do. Uh, it's, just a, it's just a different player in the last 10, 15 years than it was, mm -hmm. you know, years ago when I played. Uh, not saying that they're not team players, but every, it seems like every guy has an agenda. How do I do this? When I do this, I'm going to do this. You just better go out there and play and help your team win. That's the most important thing. But how how long did it take for you guys in Buffalo? Um, Marv that's a good up? question because we went through a couple coordinators like a lot of people do. We had Ted Marcher Broda starting. Um, just playing together. And, you know, when you play together with a bunch of guys for a long time, there's no 
other way that you can't be good. Because if you're not, then you're not going to be there. They bring somebody else in, mm-hmm. which is what New England does a lot. They pick guys up from the waiver wire that you don't think that could play, and then you're like, who scored that touchdown? Oh, that guy. That guy's you know, playing well for them all year. So you just got to be on the same page, man. That's the main thing, and it doesn't matter who that player is. We had Reggie Wayne, who I think is going to be in the same of room course. as you one day soon. We had him yes, on last will. week. Yeah. And he was saying that it's not easy – when you're Antonio Brown, to have some kid like Juju Smith-Schuster show up and start eating into your catches and touchdowns. It's mm-hmm. not easy for someone like Julio Jones to watch Calvin Ridley come in and grab touchdowns, mm-hmm. certainly if you're not winning. Right. Did you ever have that with Lofton? Um, not really. You know what? Because I knew every time he stepped on the field, he was going to make me better. And by making me better, that makes the next person better. And then we are better as a team – and we win, which is the most important thing, winning. You're going to get stats. I mean, this is a passing league. You know, you can bring anybody on here. It's a passing football league. Mm-hmm. They want points scored. Defenses are still stout in their own way. They want to stop, stop people. I mean, look at Kansas City right now in the Rams. They're the two best teams in the game. Kansas City's a little bit shaky on defense, but the Rams got studs on defense. They, you know, with Donald and Sue and the two corners – uh, even though Tlaib's out. But then you bring that offense along, what Jared Goff is doing with Gurley. Oh, they got so many weapons. Patrick Mahomes is just tearing the league up. I mean, this is a kid that – did I think that he was going to be the player he was going to be? I think Andy Reid has just given him the keys and said, just drive the car. And you got the cheetah out there, and you got Sammy Watkins, and it's not like Kareem Hunt's having the game – you know, the, the season he had last year so far. Right. But you bring him along – and, it, again, they're hard to stop with Mahomes back there. So uh, something's got to give. Did you hear what Jalen Ramsey had to say about the cheetah? He's probably, he wants to turn him into, a, like, a little no, squirrel no, or something. No, hold on a minute. Let's, let's, let's get uh, that sound bite up uh, for, for Andre Reid here. No, this was Jalen Ramsey yesterday. Okay. Uh, talking about Tyreek Hill when asked about the matchup with Ramsey and Hill coming up this weekend. Okay. Here's what Jalen had to say. He's good for what he does for their team. Uh, you know, he made all pro as a return specialist. Let's get that right. As a return specialist, uh, his rookie year, he went to two Pro Bowls as a return specialist. Return specialist. Um, two years, I, I made all pro in my position as a corner. Uh, went to the Pro Bowl as a corner. Um, so it's not a wide receiver versus corner matchup. Wow. <laughs> But you know what? I think Jalen has been saying that kind of stuff ever since he came in the league. And obviously he's, if not the best corner in the league, he's top five. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, when I played, it was Dion and Rod Woodson, all those guys. Yeah. They just didn't have that kind of mentality. I mean, Dion might have talked a little bit. And I think Jalen backs it up. But I think he, when he hears himself talk, that hypes him up more. And, and of course, media loves that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And he loved, they loved talking when he played Odell two weeks ago. Uh, every good corner wants to be on their best player. Jalen's a good corner, great corner, mm-hmm. wants to be on their best player. And that's Tyreek Hill this week. So, oh, well, I, But uh, he's a return specialist, I just that's, heard. That's true, that's Andre, true. But He's a um, return specialist, the way I just heard it. How do you think the return specialist is handling that information? Uh, when it comes there's back probably to- a lot of return guys not too happy about that, but... Again, everybody loves talking. This is a this is a and he just wants somebody to talk back at him. And again, he's probably the top corner of the league and he backs it up. But it's good for media. And I think that's oh, what I he know, put. trust me, by the yeah. way, I I thank the football guys. I'm sure, if somebody, he, I'm sure if he was sitting here, he'd talk about you. Well, w- interestingly enough, he sat behind me at oh, the he? NFL honors this past year. How was that? Oh, I reminded him of what the seating chart looked like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you were in front of him. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. I don't know exactly. how much longer I will be, but oh, yeah. yeah, I was. Yeah, so I, I think it's going to be a great match. I mean, this weekend's games are going to be awesome. Yeah, I know. But Tyreek yeah. and Tyreek Hill, um, do you think that the locker room or the Andy Reid is going to try and feed no, Tyreek based on this? And, Andy's he's not, not that kind take of coach. That cheese? He no, won't take that cheese? He's not going to take that bait. Who was, the, who was the best trash talker when you were playing? Who you know what? I, again, I talk about... It's just a, such a different game. I never, there's nobody to actually talk trash. Come on. Really? I never really, really had a guy talk trash. 
you know, like constantly. You know, Never? maybe sometimes, hey, you know, today is going to be one of these days, you know, it's going to be a long day. And I was like, yeah, today is going to be a long day for you too. So that's there, the way it went? Yeah, that was it. I, I think the respect factor, and I, I'm sure these guys respect each other. I hope they, hope they do because if you don't respect somebody, you're going you're gonna to get burned up quick. And I just didn't, I just can't tell you one guy no that I can say, believe that's it or not. not even, that's not trash. That's not garbage. That's, that's not even yeah. recycling. That's yeah. not even it's yeah. polite. Politeness. That's very polite. Yeah. yeah. So uh, did, did nobody trash talk on your team at all? Oh, we had a bunch of guys that trash talk. Okay, now team. there we go. Who yeah. was that? Yeah, well, you know, Thurman, all those guys, they they were Bruce, Thurman, Biscuit, yeah. uh, Daryl Talley. All the defensive guys did the most trash talking. So there were no defenders that would be talking trash to you then? No, that I remember. You know, okay. that really kind of was all right. in my head, and I couldn't, you know, do what I wanted to do. Okay. Andre Reid here, Pro Football Hall of Famer on the Rich Eisen Show. What do you think of Josh Allen, the current state of the Bills? Great kid. Uh, quick story, I met him uh, at the draft this year, and uh, we were all in a room, all the you know the top 15, 16, or 20 guys being drafted yep. uh, on the first day, and Roger Goodell and Jim Brown, and you had a bunch of other players, Steve Atwater, were just kind of just bringing these kids into and saying, hey, this is what you're getting into. Okay, it is now what you did in past. Is how are you going to handle yourself as a professional? And it was just a meet and greet and all and it's ironic that I really gravitated to Josh Allen right away. And we ended up picking him the second, I say we, yeah, no. the Bills picked him seventh pick. And he wanted to know, what, what was, what's Buffalo like? I was like, this is crazy. Like, the craziest fans in, in, in the NFL. I said, if you get picked by us, you're, you're coming into a, uh, a serious fan base that loves their team, that wants to win. And that's when you come in there, that's, what you, you gotta, that's the mentality you got to have. You got to have a winning mentality because we haven't won in a while. We haven't been in the playoffs. And, you know, we were in the playoffs last year, the first time in 17 years. So, uh, and then we ended up picking him. And I'm, I'm just proud of him because it's not that he doesn't have a lot to work with. I mean, Sean McDermott is a great coach. He's a good coach. But he's got a lot of young guys. This is a young football team. And they're just trying to feel themselves out to, you know, put all this together. And it's, it's tough, I mean, and with, with a young squad. But two weeks ago, he showed that he's a leader, he has confidence, and they just got to get everybody around him to play better. Yeah, I mean, that just came out of nowhere. I mean, yeah, I never thought weeks, he would – yeah, he flying over people and jumping over buildings and stuff like that. Yeah. That, was, that was pretty good. Anthony Barr, not yeah. just anybody. Yeah, diving into end zones. I think that really showed not only what kind of player he could be, but it just showed that team right there on that, in that game going into Minnesota and beating Minnesota, who was in NFC Championship last year, that, okay – I want this to be my team. And, um, you know, we'll see what happens. So you just got to be on it. They, they all got to be together, you know, with him. The Andre Reid Foundation, helping underprivileged children reach their full potential and become responsible contributors to their communities for the last eight years established in yes. 2010. What's the Reid with Reid 83 program here? Well, it's, it's a national literacy program that uh, uh, started about a year and a half ago through the Boys and Girls Club of America. I'm, I'm a Boys and Girls Club kid. I, I grew up in the clubs and along with Denzel and uh, J-Lo and Shaq, we're all club kids. And I go around doing speeches for them uh, across the country. And mm -hmm. uh, it's ironic that as a kid, I didn't, when I went home at night, I didn't have people, you know, my mom and dad read to me. And reading is so important that you want to tell these kids they love to exercise outside and they love to run around, but you got to exercise your brain too. And, and it's important, uh, you know, one really, Telling stat, 83%, my number, which is which is ironic, mm -hmm. of kids in poverty can't read past third grade. So there's a lot of telling stats that really uh, uh, make literacy real real important. Reading 30 minutes a day and all these little things that they got to do because it's they're gonna it's gonna be if they do that they'll become more successful in life and that's what my program does. Uh, and we're in 15 NFL cities right now. We want to be in all 32. And so we take kids to a game. We, you know, they read enough books. They get to move their football. They score touchdowns. And then they go to a game and meet the owner. They meet the players down on the field. They get VIP status. That's awesome. So it's a, it's a great incentive program for these kids to realize that it's important in life. Uh, sponsored by the Boys and Girls Clubs, AndreReedFoundation.org. Check it and out. And it's powered by right events.com. Fantastic. Yes. Good to see you, sir.
Great don't, to see don't you. Be Thanks for me, man. This is first to hopefully many times. I get you got to see it. No here. problem. Let's talk some ball throughout the season. You got it. Andre Reed. Uh, check him out on Twitter at Andre underscore Reed 83. Uh, we're back with 844-204-RICH. Number to dial here on the show. The Rich Eisen Show. Weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.